Today, we're going to be comparing the identification of spotted sandpiper with a similar looking bird, solitary sandpiper. Wherever you live in North America, a few solitary sandpipers likely pass near your home every autumn. However, it's important to note that the more common spotted sandpipers in fall don't have spots. These two species look more alike than you might think. This video will teach you how to tell them apart with confidence so that you don't make this identification error. Welcome, my name is Greg and I want to help you improve your bird identification skills. The techniques used in this video will help you identify all birds more quickly and accurately. Grab your favorite field guide and follow along with me as we identify these birds. Both of these sandpipers are rather small. They are slightly smaller than killdeer, but they are thin and lanky. They have fairly long legs, fairly long necks, and fairly long bills. They have some brown on the upper breast. Both show white eye rings. They are not nearly as large as yellow legs, but have a similar, if slightly more compact, shape. Let's start with a bird you may already know, spotted sandpiper. This one is in breeding plumage, as you would expect, April through July. But concentrate on shape. What do you notice about the overall posture? What I see is a rather more compact bird. It is resting its head on its shoulders so that it looks like it has a short neck. The legs look kind of short and fat. The wings are short. The tertials cover the primaries. The primaries are completely hidden. They do not stick out beyond the tertials. And then the tail sticks out way past the wings. The bill is almost exactly the same length as the head tip to base. And the bill is thick, as thick as the eye for much of its length. Let's look at spotted sandpiper in September. Again, we see the rather thick bill. It remains rather thick and blunt throughout its length. This photo shows a little longer neck than the previous photo. The bird is slimmed down and not as fluffed up and round. The upper part coloration is plain brown. There are alternating dark and pale bars on the wing coverts. Note the obvious pale eyebrow line, especially behind the eye. It is not strong, but made more obvious by a contrasting dark line through the eye. Here is spotted sandpiper in December, showing white eyebrow and barred wing coverts. A white eye ring shows strongly on this bird. Also note a few round spots on the flanks. Importantly, a patch of smooth brown extends from the neck onto the sides of the breast. In flight, spotted sandpipers show an obvious thin white wing stripe on the upper wing. And if you can get a good look at the tail, you will see that both the tail and rump are solid dark brown with black bars. There are a few small white tips on the tail feathers, and the tail is wedge-shaped. The underwing has a lot of white in it. This is important to note if a bird flies away before you get a definitive view on the ground. Let's switch over from spotted sandpipers to solitary sandpipers. They are very similar in size. The solitary sandpiper has just slightly longer neck, bill, and legs. If we look more closely at the bill, we can see that it is one and a quarter times the length of the head from tip to base. It tapers to a fine point. It does not stay thick for most of its length, as does the spotted sandpiper's bill. Now let's look carefully at the plumage. Rather than a dark line through the eye and a white eyebrow over the eye, solitary sandpiper is subtly different. It has dark lowers, the feathers in front of the eye. It has pale, supralaural feathers above those. It is as if it has the start of a pale eyebrow stripe in front of the eye, but it doesn't continue over and behind the eye. The big white eye ring really stands out though. The dark breast is not evenly smooth as on non-breeding spotted sandpipers. Rather, the breast of solitary sandpiper is brown with darker streaks. Finally, this juvenile solitary sandpiper in September shows dark brown upper parts and wings covered in small pale dots, especially obvious on the wing coverts and tertials. Remember that wing coverts on the spotted sandpiper were barred, not spotted. Note the dull green legs. Lesser yellow legs is very similar to solitary sandpiper, especially in size and shape. However, yellow legs always have bright yellow legs. Solitary sandpipers have dark barred underwings. Likewise, the upper wings are also entirely dark. 
The rump and center of the tail are dark, but notice the white outer tail feathers with dark bars. This unique pattern is different from the white rump and tail of yellow legs and the all dark tail of spotted sandpipers. Equally important as to how a bird looks is how it behaves, how it sounds, and where it lives. Spotted sandpipers have some interesting behaviors that give away their identity, even at great distances. Spotted sandpipers habitually tail bob and head nod. This teetering makes spotted sandpipers instantly identifiable. These birds often crouch with tail high and head low. They walk with jerky starts and stops. When they fly across water, they fly low with stiff, fluttering, rapid wing beats. When they do so, they often give a peat wheat call. Spotted sandpipers migrate into the United States in late March. Many head south in August, though finding them in November is not unusual. A few spotted sandpipers winter in the southern states and along the west coast and coastal southeast. They occur on the shore but don't wade as much as other shorebirds. They tend to keep their feet dry. They may be found on rocky streams, golf courses, pond edges, and ocean shores. They readily perch on man-made structures. Solitary sandpipers usually move in a slow and deliberate manner. They bob their tails occasionally, but not anything like spotted sandpipers. They often call in flight. Their calls are wheat wheat, slightly higher pitched and louder than spotted sandpipers, but very similar. Overhead, they are very angular. Their long pointed wings are held forward at the wrist with snappy wing strokes. After they fly in and land, they may keep their wings raised for a moment, showing the dark underwing. Solitary sandpipers really are waders. They spend much of their time wading in water. These birds breed in boreal forests of Canada and Alaska. In the west, spring migration of solitary sandpipers is from early April to early May. Adults migrate south primarily in August and juveniles in September. In the east, spring migration starts a week or two earlier and fall migration lasts into October, especially in the southeast. Solitary sandpipers in migration are found in puddles, farm ponds, flooded fields with emergent vegetation, and shallow weedy bodies of fresh water. They are usually not found with other shorebirds that like more exposed mudflats. In summary, spotted sandpipers in fall have smooth brown upper breast, barred wing coverts, stout bill, and active tail bobbing. Solitary sandpipers have streaked breasts, spots on the wing coverts, a tapering bill, bold eye ring, and dull green legs. My bird identification playlist has many more identification discussions. Be sure to check that out. Is there a species identification or confusing pair of birds that you would like to see covered next? Let me know in the comments. I'll create a video to answer your question. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it when it comes out. Thank you so much for watching.